Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Eddie Medina. So towards the end of the video in part one, I left off uh, saying that in part two, I was gonna show you uh, what I was gonna do in terms of uh, creating an overhead rig. So in part one, I, I finished off with saying that I had a, uh, a C-stand and that I had come across um, this uh, tabletop slider that I had laying around. Um, and so, uh, what I ended up doing is I mounted it on the extension arm on the C stand with two super clamps. Um, so with this particular rig, I can actually um, adjust the ball head uh, to whatever position I want the camera to be. Um, in this case, is uh, 90 degrees perpendicular to the table. Uh, but I can also have it so that it, I can move it back and forth along the track if I need it to. Uh, one thing though that I had to do is that uh, I am using, for example, these uh, ankle weights here uh, that you normally use for working out um, because I'm using it as a counterweight uh, because depending on how big the lens is, uh, this tends to creep and kind of move out of axis. Um, and so depending on how big the lens is, that's how much counterweight I need to hang from it. But uh, as of right now, I'm using the Nifty 50, so it's shooting down on the table. And um, this is basically the result. So one of the first items that I want to talk about is the Manfrotto monopod here. And this one is the Manfrotto element. Uh, there's a couple of things that I like about it. This one actually extends about 95 uh, inches. And one of the things that caught my eye is that the diameter of the tubing is actually pretty wide considering that it's a basic $50 uh, monopod. And so being that the diameter of the tubing um, is uh, pretty beefy, uh, it allows you to put uh, you know, heavy cameras on it uh, or you can use it as a, uh, an extension pole that you can attach to a gimbal if you wanna do uh, really high up uh, gimbal shots and whatnot, so it it comes really handy. One modification though that I wanted to do to this monopod is that I wanted to add the support feet or the support leg, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a small tripod that goes uh, towards the bottom of the unit. So I ended up getting this um, monopod support, which I was actually pretty impressed by it. When you open it up and you extend the legs, you can see that the surface area that it covers is actually uh, pretty large. So it makes it very stable. So if you, um, once you have the monopod upright, uh, it's going to uh, have um, some good support. The legs are made out of, um, out of metal. Uh, so it's very, very sturdy. This thing is really well made. I'm actually uh, very impressed by it. Uh, this particular um, unit is made by a company called uh, Leo Photo, um, or at least they're the ones who uh, supply it. And it was about $35 on Amazon, okay? So now, uh, one thing though uh, that I did notice is when I tried to, uh, uh, attach the support to the monopod, uh, I was under the impression that, it, you know, with monopods, cameras, and things like that, you either use a quarter inch or a three eighths um, attachment to it. Uh, but what I ended up uh, finding out is, uh, is that Manfrotto in their vast uh, business wisdom, they made the decision to make this different than a quarter inch or a three eighths. So basically, I guess what they were saying is, oh, you're gonna get the cheapest monopod? Then you know what? We're gonna make it hard for you to add a aftermarket uh, support here. So we're gonna put a different type of thread uh, in a different size onto um, the bottom here where you can screw it. So what they ended up doing is, they put in what is called an M8 or a matrix 8 um, thread here. But, um, you know, like in martial arts, whenever somebody uh, 
puts you in a lock, there is always a way to counter that, and there's always a counter to the counter. So in this case, uh, what we ended up doing is that I got this attachment. This is an M8 attachment, so this is uh, metric eight, and at the bottom, it gives you the three eights that you need to connect the supporting, uh, uh, the supporting uh, tripod or feet or whatever you want to call it. So this basically screws on here, like so, okay? Uh, this particular support normally comes with a quarter inch uh, screw, but they also give you a 3 8 adapter. So you can add that to it and you can go ahead and screw this on. Okay. What I like also about the support is that it has this piece here, this, this unscrew, so you can actually, you're actually able to kind of uh, um, adjust it to whatever angle you need. Or if you don't want it, you can just go ahead and lock it in place and lock it at 90 degrees upright. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty sturdy. Okay, it won't go anywhere. And you can place whatever camera you want. You can also uh, add a, um, a, video, a video head here and um, you can move it around and do whatever it is they need to do. It's actually comes in pretty handy. So here you go. Okay, and this is how you can make a an inexpensive uh, monopod into something that looks like you paid a bunch of money for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can also adjust and actually bend the leg. So if you need to just use this rubber support on it, you can actually do that too. Okay, pretty cool and it didn't break the bank. The next item is this uh, LED video light. It's actually an RGB light, so you can change it from uh, a daylight balance uh, light all the way to um, any color that you can possibly think of. It's made by a company called Sute Photo or Suit Photo. I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced, uh, but this particular light has uh, 16 million colors. It has a, uh, it, the, um, color temperature. Uh, you can set it up from 2500 all the way to uh, 8500 Kelvin. Uh, the HSI is 1530. Uh, it has 10 different scenes. Uh, the inputs and the outputs are USB type C. Um, the CRI on this particular unit is 95. Um, it comes with a little uh, OLED display up in the front uh, and it uses about 10 watts of power, so this thing will actually last uh, for quite a bit. Um, when we open it, it comes in a cool little carrying case here, so it keeps it really protected. It's actually very nice. Um, so the light, uh, as you can see, this is the size of the light. It's not too big. I like the fact that the construction is actually aluminum, so it's actually pretty sturdy. Uh, in addition to that, it has this uh, hot shoe mount um, that you can go ahead and screw the light on if you need it to use it as a video light. So it screws, screws on to it this way. And then you, obviously you put it on, on top of your camera. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, in addition to that, as I mentioned, it comes with um, the USB-C cable. And this is uh, the cables that you're going to use to uh, charge the unit itself because it has, uh, uh, obviously, rechargeable batteries. Okay, so once you turn the unit on, you have uh, the on and off button here. The LCD will come on and it has a set button and also has a plus and minus. So, for example, right now, it's, um, this is set up based on Kelvin, so this is 6500. This would be considered a, a daylight balance light output that it's putting right now. Uh, right now, it's a 100%, but if you, if you bring it down, you'll see how it, uh, you can bring down the intensity on this, okay, or bring it back up, okay? Uh, when you hit here on the menu, 
Uh, the on and off button is also a menu button. So when you hit that, it'll change it to HSI. So in this case, you can technically um, control um, the different uh, the different the different type of colors they have. You press on the man menu again, it changes to RGB. So on the RGB side of it, it gives you um, here on the display to the RGB and you can technically um, adjust each RGB, um, which means red, green, blue. You can actually adjust the numbers because it goes from zero all the way to 255. And any type of combination of those three, um, of those three colors will generate a different color if you like. Uh, one of the cool things that I uh, uh, that comes with this, it's in the, the manual here. The manual will give you will give you basically the combination, the three numbers that you need to create to create a specific number, or I'm sorry, a specific color that you may want. Uh, like I said, you can use this as an accent light. Put it uh, back in the background turn it whatever color you want and so that way it'll uh, you know it'll give you some ambiance or whatever it is that you're going for so this is pretty neat here um, on how you can change it and it comes with the with the unit itself okay and um, so you go through the menus again and this is where it gives you the different scenes um, in in this case right now what it's mimicking is lightning Okay, and I have it at 10%, but I can go ahead and put it up to 100%. And it'll do, this is uh, lightning mode number one. So it'll do that kind of thing. This is lightning mode number two. This is cinema. So this kind of creates um, a, a look as if you were at the movie theaters. And so if you're uh, shooting a scene where you need to uh, create that kind of mood where, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at people and they're getting those uh, flashes of lights that you see in the cinema, uh, you can recreate that. Uh, this would be the police mode. So it switches from red to blue. Okay. Like a, a cop car. This would be the ambulance where it don't, they only flash blue. Uh, this would be the fire truck, which they normally flash just red. And this is fast RGB. So basically what it's, what it's doing is just going, it's just cycling through um, the RGB colors and just randomly uh, mixing them up and creating new colors and just uh, uh, switching from one to the other. This will be slow. So it's basically the same concept that I just mentioned. It just does it... Uh, a lot slower. This is SOS. So if you are stranded in a uh, deserted island and you need, uh, you know, you need uh, the plane to see you, this would be what the SOS would look like. And this also, this is candlelight. This is the candlelight mode. So if you needed to, if you have a scene that you're shooting and you want to mimic that flickering of the flame or whatnot, this will give you that and back to lightning one okay so pretty cool so for now what I'm gonna do is just for the sake of some ambiance here in my little makeshift studio I'm going to go ahead and switch it to RGB fast and I'm gonna put it here in the background and just let it be so this unit here uh, it's uh, made by a company called Lilliput and it's the A7S, it's a 4K resolution uh, monitor. Uh, this particular unit here is actually pretty lightweight. Uh, and it also comes with uh, this uh, rubber protection here. It's like a, a, a case, if you will. Um, it has all the control uh, buttons up here on the top. Uh, it has a, a quarter inch uh, both on top or the bottom so you can, you know, um, mount it however you like. 
the cool thing about uh, this monitor is that it, 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 in one of the modes you can actually um, invert it so it can be inverted uh, and it'll switch the image um, it has an AC adapt uh, AC plug in here uh, it does not come with the AC adapter you would have to buy that separately but you're able to uh, add it to uh, it has a uh, headphone input and an HDMI in and an HDMI out uh, this particular unit here obviously comes with uh, the user's guide it comes with uh, one HDMI cable it actually comes with two if you need it um, and it also has these uh, battery adapters here uh, this one is for um, this is the LPE6 which is usually uh, an adapter that you can use with a Canon battery so the, the unit you would um, you will put the adapter on here and then you can just slip a, um, a Canon uh, camera battery onto it. Uh, if you use Sony, then this one comes with the Sony adapter uh, for the Sony batteries if you need it. So uh, it comes with those two items. Also, it, and it has a sunshade, which is very cool. You can uh, open up the shade. Uh, it has like a felt material here, so it's not going to um, you know, if the sun hits it, it's not going to reflect anything. It'll, it's, it's matte, so it keeps it from uh, reflecting light into it. It has a Velcro uh, surrounding it, so you can just go ahead and, and add it here to, to the top of the unit, and then you flip it to the sides, and it creates a little uh, sunshade. Uh, so if you're using it out in the open or during uh, sunny days or whatever the case may be uh, so it's pretty cool so you can monitor what you're doing and let's see in addition to that it also comes with a um, hot shoe mount that you can either once again you can either mount it from the top or mount it from the bottom depending on what your need is so this is a very uh, cool unit and actually I'm going to be uh, not in this video, but I'm going to be using it for future videos and I'm already uh, going to be mounting it to the, this particular C-stand here to help me monitor because it's a lot easier for me to see uh, what I'm, what's happening from, from the overhead uh, rig than me having to be looking up at the tiny little uh, tiny monitor that's with this uh, EOS R camera that I have hanging up on the rig. Uh, so, like once again, this uh, unit is $160, um, and I also what I ended up doing is, since like I said, I want to mount it to this particular um, C stand, I got this uh, articulating arm um, uh, pieces here. And this is a whole kit. Uh, the articulating arm actually uh, was uh, this was only $16 here. Okay, so now that the articulating arm is uh, connected to the C-stand, and for the sake of not overcomplicating things, I'm just gonna use this um, adapter here. As you can see, uh, if I try to mount it onto the articulating arm right now, uh, because the knob is here, I won't be able to turn this around. So just to make my life easier for now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to mount this adapter okay so it puts it higher than this knob so now it's going to allow me to it's going to allow me to screw on the monitor without any issues okay okay i'm going to take the i'm going to take this for now because i don't need it when i'm indoors and so now that it's set up, I'll be able to connect it to the camera. So, okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, I am going to go ahead and everything that I talked about today, I'm going to uh, put links in the description below uh, so that if you're interested in any, uh, any of these things, if you want to try them out yourself, you can go ahead and do so. Uh, no, I'm not getting paid to say any of this or to recommend any of these things. Uh, I'm not being sponsored by any of these manufacturers. I'm just sharing with you the stuff that I, uh, I use. 
and that I think will not break the bank. Uh, so I thank you again for, for watching and if you like any of this information, if it's of use to you, uh, please like, uh, subscribe and also ring the bell so that you can get notifications on future videos that I put out. In the meantime, once again, thank you and I'll see you on the next one.